TPR. Yeah, so uh, it was, I, I'll be honest, it was pretty random for me, especially like from my perspective, because um, we all knew that, you know, Spotify is a really big international music platform um, and it's really in Pakistan. It's it's a big deal for, for some, some like company like that to be um, kind of launching. And... When they reached out to me, it was, of course, through like LinkedIn. And um, you know how on LinkedIn you get like, uh, if you're like an avid user of that yeah, <laughs> platform, I'm, I'm big on LinkedIn. like yeah. so spammy all the <laughs> yeah. time. Like, yeah. reach out. especially in Pakistan, I feel like LinkedIn, like people don't like the majority at least doesn't have that um, know how of how exactly you should, you're supposed to use it. So like, I've also gotten a lot of friendship requests on yeah, LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I actually got a message uh, on LinkedIn um, from someone um, from the HR team reaching out that, you know, we have um, an opening. We would really want you to, you know, consider uh, applying for this and all that. And I was like, yeah, this is, yeah, whatever. Okay, spam. But I don't know why. I just, I was just like, you know what? It's okay. Like, let's, let's take a look. Um, because there was the whole JD attached to the message and, um it it seemed a little bit legit like there was like like it was not that spammy right. so i was like okay sure and then i got um in touch with that the person and um it was i think it took me a week or two for them to just hire me um i did like a series of interviews um extensive tests and stuff and um yeah that, so when they reached the out, problem. it didn't say it didn't say that we're from Spotify when they reached out to you. Oh uh no, of course it did. Oh yeah. right, it did. Okay. okay. Yeah. I thought yeah. they were being so, like super uh, anonymous. No, 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 not really. Okay. Uh, okay. Of course, like it's just like when someone's reaching out to you on LinkedIn and you're also like a professional, then it's just like a given that you need to be very discreet about things. Right, so. right, right. So what right. was the what was the job? Uh, so I was actually, I joined Spotify as um, an editor, mm. uh, which essentially means like sort of like a curator slash programmer um, for uh, for certain regions. For me, it was Pakistan, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. Right. Uh, yeah. um, and then since then, I mean, I've moved on to a senior role, uh, being a senior editor, which is uh, like a bit vast in terms of responsibilities. It's more of like a cultural um, expert and music expert for, for these three regions slash programming, curating, mm. um, um, making sure, um, you know, other than just the playlist aspect of everything, then there's also everything else that you see on platform from your home feed to your search to everything else. Um, so yeah, widely just, I would say, um, making sure that, that the programming on platform is, is something um that will appeal to the Pakistani audiences and something for them, at least. Right, right, right. So professionally, I think a big part of your job is listening to music. That's that's a good yeah. job to have, yeah, right? Massive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Acha. Uh, Pakistani music you might be familiar with, but when you... I don't know how familiar were you <laughs> with uh, music from uh, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka when you started? Pretty much like, so um, I've always been into exploring, just like trying to discover music, um, even like sonically, you know, even if you don't understand language, I've been not just Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, but like um, even outside South Asia, I've been really mm. into um, Arabic indie music uh, since like about 10 years ago. Right. That's when right. I started getting Right. So um, I think it's just um, um, I was familiar with, of course, like uh, the mainstream already and more indie indie scene of these countries more than the 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 like mainstream one. But um, yeah, it was really uh, surprising when I really got into it, like made it my kind of job mm. to 
curate a program for these markets, it was like, okay, this is so, so familiar because, you know, at the end of the day, it is South Asian music. Right. So there are a lot of overlapping right. aspects of music other than the language. Even when it comes to language, you would, it, it's kind of surprising how much overlapping in terms of like um, the metaphors we use and um, the kind of uh, themes and all of that stuff. Mm. So, yeah. Mm. So it wasn't, it wasn't too much of a, like a, like a learning curve no, to like, get on board. Not like a very unfamiliar territory. Right, 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 right. So initially when you start, but then how do you go about curating the playlist aspect? Because in that, it's not just the music that you like, you're sort of thinking of what people like or what people would like, because many of these songs are new. And at the time you joined, I think Spotify was also very new in the region. So mm -hmm. there's a few things there, right? You're new to the job. Artists are new to Spotify. How was that initial time? Because a big thing that we're talking about is that recently it's been two years since Spotify has been in the region. So how have things changed in terms of just how deeply connected Spotify is in the market? Because I Pakistan. So Pakistan, now Spotify is like everyone has it almost. And it is the medium that you just have to be on if you want to be a professional some sort of professional working artist you have to be on spotify mm -hmm. so how how has the experience changed for you from the inside with regards to you know getting more music getting more into the playlist making how's all that changed um so i mean there are, i think a few parts to that question so first of all i think um it wasn't really new to me mm. when it came to my programming and stuff because like I've done that in the past for yeah. um, other services and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but but in terms of of course internally, every every company has their own processes and all of that. So that was of course like that's like even if you're not in working in a music streaming service, any company has their own 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 kind of policies and procedures and all of that. So of course that's like a uh, learning that you have to, you know, uh, do anyway. But other than that, there, I, 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 honestly, like, I was really, really comfortable um, doing what I was supposed to do because, like, I was really familiar with the uh, the entire landscape of music in Pakistan and and Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. But specifically, if I talk about Pakistan, how it's changed, it's changed in like uh, since since like Spotify launch, it's changed like massively in so many ways because, um, uh, if like, for example, um, I think the artists are, of course, uh, familiar with uh, most artists, I would say, uh, who are on Spotify are familiar with how to pitch your songs um, for playlisting, let's say, for example. So if, in, from, if I talk about how it's changed from that um, aspect, in the beginning, um, a lot of artists were not very um, like knowledgeable on how to pitch your tracks to playlists and how it works and how mm. can they have more visibility on platform and all of that. But um, I think since we've launched, there, there's been a lot of education and education around it and people have been actually like artists have been curious about it. So now you see a lot of artists doing, really doing that the right way, you know, pitching their tracks for playlists. Mm. Um, and then I've, I think, I, I think we also noticed that um, we have, since the launch, we actually have a lot of music coming out of Pakistan um yeah and some of it we i think some of it uh, the general audience might not even know about so if you look at playlists like fresh finds or pakistani indie rising or nay bars which is sort of like a um, new music friday for hip hop mm. um you will find artists in there that you you would never even heard of like. yeah yeah and it's crazy the amount of music that I listen to every week um that's that, I've, that other people have never heard of, heard of before music I've never heard of before so that's very nice to see because you know it's like sort of like feeding into the ecosystem and then yeah um it's not like a small set of artists who's just releasing and then this very redundant but it's a lot of other artists it's just a matter of also giving them an opportunity to amplify their music um yeah. along with the with our mainstream or the the usual suspects we see what we do see with spotify is initially i'm sure when you started there weren't that many artists um online perhaps 
um, because there perhaps wasn't as big a service available for people who are already musicians. So when I'm imagining when, you know, Spotify first launches in the region, you get all those established artists already, right? They all get onboarded. But then there's all the new people, people who we would quote unquote call indie, uh, who now have this new platform. And what I sort of felt was it was like a reciprocal relationship, as in more the more people found Spotify for their work, it seemed like more people were inspired to get into music also because of like, oh, now there's a service and this sort of like, the volume was increasing sort of exponentially in terms of, you know, like you mentioned, there's so many artists coming about, there's so many playlists that you're directly mm-hmm. involved in. And uh, I think that really, because we've talked on the podcast before about the challenges of being a musician in Pakistan, I'm sure you are very personally aware of this in, uh, you know, your life. But um, one of the big things is you need a platform, right? Like, I have made songs, now where will they go? Right? You know, do you okay. just email them to everybody or do you use, like, perhaps alternative services? Because Spotify's reach is sort of unparalleled it's in global, the region, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And it's global, huh? So... Yeah, um, with this work, so playlist, big deal, uh, a big part of your work is curating playlists. Do you want to talk about a few of the major playlists, the thought process that goes into them um, with as much detail as you can? Um, so, I mean, I would say that's like a, the biggest part of my job, but it's, it is, yeah, one significant part, but yeah. Um, the playlist honestly like every playlist um that we have for pakistan has its own kind of hypothesis its own specific audience um right right so i i honestly can't uh cover all of them but if i were to talk about like our flagship playlist um when i say flagship i mean the most popular playlists mm. in pakistan that we have locally um I don't know if you've recently heard about Pakka Hit Hai. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's essentially our hits hits playlist, um, but just for local hits. So it's the local hits flagship, and it's like a brand that we've created for for just the Pakistani audiences. And it's just curious all the hit tracks, current hit tracks, um, in Pakistan. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm among others. They're like there's hottest Pakistan, which is also super popular, which kind of curates the hits. They're not just local, but all the all the hits from uh, that right. the Pakistan audiences are listening to right now. I would want to listen to, and then there's Desi hits. This is also super uh, popular within South Asia. It's kind of like a um, South Asian flagship hits flagship, I would say. Uh, so it curates um, the best uh, and the most like like hit tracks in South yeah. Asia right now. Um, so yeah, those. I I mean the thought process, of course. If I were to talk to uh, talk about these three specific playlists, the thought process is very similar. That um, what are it's like a, it's like a combination of things, right? So the first thing that we think about is that what are the songs that currently people in the country are listening to? Sure. Um, and then of course the second aspect of it is that we look at what are uh, the tracks that will potentially become right. uh, right. uh and we of course like with these kind of playlists we don't take major risk because they're supposed to be short short hits so, yeah. And yeah. So hit. um yeah, yeah. but now and then we we on the basis of our knowledge and you know our experiences uh we uh, like uh, basis of the expertise that we have we kind of try and see that is there a song that's on the rise right now that we can try out and maybe potentially it will become a hit. So just like this, there are other playlists that we have, like let's say Pakistani indie, Pakistani rock, Pakistani uh, pop and all of that. Those playlists as well, that's that's where we um, try to see how a track's journey um, kind of happens from one playlist to another. So it ends up eventually in the the hits playlists, right. which are our flashbacks. Right. Right. So the first playlist, for example, you if you're an artist and you're really releasing a song, um, potentially the first playlist that it will probably go on is New Music Friday as right. soon as it's released. Um, and then, of course, based on performances and how it's doing, it moves from one playlist to another. Um, we kind of so basically we created we've created an ecosystem where 
uh, a track has a very specific journey based on its performance. Sometimes it makes it makes its way to the hits playlist. Sometimes it doesn't. So it really depends how it's performing organically as well. Um, and and so uh, and also like according to the support that we're giving them and how it how yeah. it kind of you know like works um, with that support essentially. Right, because obviously I'd imagine, and this might be too corporate a question, but it is in Spotify's actual interest for more people to be listening so you want the best songs you want the most listenership from a general actual music ecosystem where you want more people to do better on the app right because that creates that loop of artists getting onto spotify people finding their artists on spotify but speaking of journeys so i'm following you guys you guys follow them on instagram a big thing we're seeing on instagram is the uh equal campaign um where uh, is that the same one with the times square pictures mm-hmm. yeah, right absolutely. so i've been seeing it for a few months now um what is that what is that campaign i I think i have some sort of idea but what is that campaign how that come about what does it mean to you to people mm-hmm. um yeah so we equal is is, is a global music program uh, which means that there is a version of Equal in most countries that Spotify is live in. Mm. Um, so we have, of course, Equal Pakistan that you just mentioned. You see on Instagram, that's like the Pakistan version of Equal. Yeah. Um, it's, so Equal is essentially a program where we're trying to uh, amplify uh, the women in music uh, because you know we still have a very long way to go, even worldwide, uh, when it comes to the equity of uh, women artists yeah. in, in the industry. So. It's basically kind of uh, uh, an initiative to help achieve that. Um, we launched in um, in March, I think, last year. Mm. And um, the first artist that we, we kind of put on uh, the cover of Equal Playlist and who was our ambassador of the of that month was Aru Jaftab. Right, right. Um, and so, so essentially the, what happens is that every month we pick an artist oh. that we want to amplify who is um on the cover of of our playlist who uh who's put on Times square as well and who's you see content around them on socials as well um that's kind of thought provoking um uh, and trying to like through them trying to amplify other women artists as well um and then of course equal playlist as well on its own has other um other artists and music from other female artists in there as well mm. um so it's like a it's like a monthly program. Um, I think we, I mean, this March we had one year anniversary for Equal, um, and and honestly, it's been it's been super um, super interesting the numbers that we've seen on platform when it comes to the discovery of the female Pakistani women artists, um, because it's a part of the equal program is also that um we not we're not only curating these um artists in the local playlists but also globally so, yeah um, the, there are massive global playlists um on on spotify where we try and and push these artists who are ambassadors of the month and tracks from them um so so last year um we had 68, 68% increase in the discovery of these artists, which is massive because they're being discovered by local audiences plus the global audiences as right. well. Um, yeah, so I think um, the last ambassador um, for us was um, Sana Marvi. Mm. Um, and yeah, it's been, it's been really exciting and it's going to go on till <laughs> the end of time. Hopefully. Right, hopefully, hopefully. It's really, really important. And and so, is this so? When you work with these people, do, is there like, um, do they know that they're going to be on the place? How does that relationship with the artist work? How do they feel about this? Um, I I don't understand the question. Like, how do you mean if they like know if about an it? artist is on the you know cover of a playlist for a month, right? And every month there's mm-hmm. a new artist. So mm-hmm. is it like? Is it like an uh, a back and forth sort of relationship working with that artist for that month, or is it just you know internally Spotify is like, all right, this person this month, and ah uh, no uh, no of course um we everything we do uh with uh, an artist we we have an artist um, and label partnership team that 
is basically very very um proactively in touch with these artists so it's it's not just like something that we decide and we just do right. um but it's it's based on a lot of relationship building with every artist that we're working with mm. uh, and speaking of uh, women in music in pakistan you were a woman in music in pakistan still are a woman in music in pakistan outside outside your uh, spotify job and you know it's it's quite obvious even for someone who's not very into the industry to just take a glance and see uh, there's not that many women um in in the industry has have you seen that change personally like on a personal experience through your professional lens have you seen that change over the past couple of years perhaps through um initiatives like equal because again i'm just thinking on that feedback loop thing where people don't know something's possible until they see it and you know mm-hmm. equal is perhaps showing people that oh this is possible and people there might be women on spotify who haven't really thought about it but then when you showcase them in that specific way they get inspired so have you seen perhaps a slow but still noticeable increase in female artists over time yeah so i would really say i would say slow for sure um sure. i think it's still the ratio um is still quite off um but it's 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 getting better for sure like um right. there are lot again if you if you maybe go and look at like fresh finds uh pakistan there are very um quite a few upcoming um female artists who who are releasing music yeah um but i would like to see it a bit more sure. um for because i think it's still because of course like it's not going to happen overnight and like equals been there for a year um, and a few months i think it's going to still take a bit uh for us to really make that ecosystem kind of uh, sustainable on so on that you know the women artists are releasing music almost every other week or every <laughs> week like any other artist so um yeah there it's been it's it's it has affected the sort of like the import of new music from from the female artists but it can be much better hopefully right. the there's future. work to be done yeah of course yeah yeah okay okay that's interesting but then speaking of artists growing um we talked about you know very briefly about how uh new artists are generally considered to be indie where indie has perhaps a separate definition so now in spotify at least if you are a spotify user if you're on the internet in pakistan basically spotify is your platform um where you consider music and trends there are a lot of people uh who are very new artists um indie in the truest sense not affiliated perhaps with any established label or anything um they get onto spotify the music is great spotify does its job in promoting them making them get to the right people and then they become you know like as good as mainstream artists right they're doing massive concerts they have great listenership numbers um how as someone again you know who's so intimately familiar with the industry and now is also working on the platform side of things how have you seen an artist's journey change since spotify has come into the picture like you know how indie artists basically become pop artists how have you seen you know that change over the past couple of years since you've been here um so if i were to talk about so i guess and maybe correct me if i'm wrong but what i would you basically trying to ask is like what we considered indie a few years ago where is that now and what yeah. that journey been like for that kind of lot yeah you know jo hota tha underground uh, band jo ek zamane mein hota tha uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so uh i think um first of all let's let, let's kind of define indie sure yeah 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 Pakistan because i feel like indie indie is not the same indie um, exactly in exactly that but what it is in the um like worldwide generally um so f- so independent artist is essentially someone who's not uh, signed with the label right but if you look at pakistan i mean there's barely the, anyone who's signed yeah, with the label of yeah. course that's changing now but um if you saw like when spotify actually launched at that time there were not a lot of labels um, not of not a lot of artists were actually signed with these labels so by definition we would call them independent but yeah um there's so many mainstream artists who are also independent but really they we, we we don't think of them when we say indie right mm. so there's a very specific um uh, kind of aesthetic and and music genre that 
we associate indie with it's almost like you know niche and not not very um like uh, music for masses um uh very pers- very personal i would say also um so that that is what i call indie scene and of course like i've seen it very up close um mm. before spotify launched so since then um i would say um it's 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 evolved in a very beautiful way because um now that that indie scene and i think i could i could safely say that people like um talal qureshi yeah. or like uh, abdullah sadiqi manu um uh, natasha nurani uh, amna riaz like these these kind of artists were um were considered indie and i don't i wouldn't put them in put them in that box now because yeah uh, now you see that these artists are on top charts yeah um yeah. abdul hanan for example yeah. when it comes to, when, you, when you look at his aesthetic and when his when uh, when you look at his sound and everything that could easily been indie right uh, right so, right uh but now it's not it's uh, it's like it's your it's your it's your top charting tracks it's pop it's what people are now listening to is what the masses are now listening to so that tells you kind of two things i think one that because since spotify launched a lot of uh, i would say the listening of patterns of the audiences have also massively changed right mm. because they've been um uh they're now like kind of um what what's the word um exposed they're now exposed to so much music uh yeah. on yeah. Spotify that's no it's, I, mean, I mean before this they just had to like go on a on the internet and look for music where is the new music you know and you only see the mainstream stuff and not everything else um so since that music listening uh, kind of habits of the audiences have also changed that they're now exposed to so, so much new music they're discovering new sounds and they're finding new favorites out there exploring new genres essentially so i think that is something that's really helped these artists that we would consider indie um in the past to find um to find find their audiences that are not not really niche we we honestly think that um you know if a genre is not really like super pop or super rock or whatever it's very niche but right right there's so much audience out there for that particular genre that it's crazy like the the, the most um i think uh, the most rarest of genres like funk i don't know if you know about funk yeah no, funk yeah yeah it's, thanks it's, to tiktok i know about funk yeah genre. <laughs> yeah it it's so um like i mean it's it's not my thing <laughs> sure sure but I, it it's it's i've seen it blown up so much um and our teams in spotify have like really kind of cultivated that genre as well and I, i can't like no one could imagine how much audience there is for that genre right so i wouldn't say that the a genre um that abdul hanan falls in or 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 natasha nurani falls in or talal falls in they these genres are still not as like um you know experimental as funk for example mm-hmm. so how is it not possible to for them to find an audience that's not, not niche so so because of spotify then kind of exposing the audiences to to all these artists and their music i feel like they've been able to find their kind of audiences on on spotify and now you see um artists like kafi or mm. abdul hanan and uh, all these artists they're in top top charts that means that they were not really niche they were not really like indie in the as like you know the pakistani definition but they just needed to find their audiences yeah and so, now, now especially be- is everywhere like i was in pakistan earlier this year and every restaurant cafe house car you go to cafe kahani suno 2.0 very important is everywhere it's the top one number one track in india right now so imagine wow. that yeah yeah okay imagine. so it's crazy so i mean i think i would really now not um not call these artists like indie anymore mm. they are the pop scene yeah and yeah. They, they basically change the pop scene right so um and that's very very refreshing to see i think and that shows the growth of these artists um uh, specifically on spotify 
Um, and yeah, and, and I think this is going to happen a lot. I think because of um, that exposure um, for the audiences to, to new music, uh, we might see trends happening more frequently and changing more frequently than they would before. Like, you know, before um, uh, you would just see a particular set of artists or a very specific set of genres sure. that were always there. And, right. you know, there was no um, evolving from that. Like, you what, up, you just, like, stick to that then for, like, at least a decade, that yeah, genre. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> on from it I mean and of course how would you if you're not even exposed to you know new right exactly sound so now I feel like it's going to happen even more uh trends are going to change more rapidly and artists is going to evolve with them and um find their audiences and their sounds and everything so yeah it's I think it's just a very very kind of hopeful future for music. Before ever. all of this happened, I was wondering from that thing that you mentioned, uh, where, you know, there's a specific definition of indie that perhaps somebody familiar with music might consider to be the definition. Did you, as you saw these trends changing, did you also have to change, like, how you were viewing artists and how you would have categorized their sound to be like, no, this is working for, like, a pop level? So, in, or were you just on board with that? Was there any internal evolution that was also happening this is not related to spotify this is just a rutava question <laughs> oh it's, it's it. i thought it was a spotify question because internal um evolution i don't know i i think i would still stick to i would still stick to that definition of indie that pakistan had because our market is different from yeah. other markets like you yeah. can't even in, if even if, if i talk about like as a spotify um uh, employee i we treat the genres and everything um based on the what the market is because every market is different we can't uh, operate by at least in the beginning we can't operate by the definitions of mm. what uh, they are for genres worldwide so um to be honest i think it's it's also kind of the same everywhere else so folk in every country is different right there's a different right. kind of definition of folk in every country like if you right. listen to folk in in u.s mm-hmm. sure it's not what folk is going to be in pakistan or right. india or even like let's say um, um uk sure. so um so it's it's so that's why like whenever you work you're kind of Considering a genre in your market, you have to stick to the definition that that market has for it because it needs to have relevance to the artists in that market and to the audiences in that market, basically, mm. if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it does. In in your work uh, where it's, that's what I'm thinking, it's not just looking at, you know, from a very cold sort of number sort of perspective as to, because you have like tons of data in the back end of who's listening to what, where, what's that demographic, sure. But clearly there is a lot of qualitative input that is required from your end, from the team's end, from like understanding what people like, because that thing is always very fascinating to me about how you have to sort of predict what will be famous. So in that aspect, you don't have those numbers yet, but just based on the song, based on the artist, based on the genre, uh, and based on your view of the market, you have Mm -hmm. to sort of make like a prediction as to, yeah, these songs just need that right placement and then they'll take off. So that, that's a very, it's a lot of responsibility also, um, that I'm sure everyone is very cognizant of, but it's also very interesting about, you know, it's a very different sort of, job experience i would imagine for you as well right where you're sort of like analyzing music on a you know qualitative scale mm-hmm. yeah um yeah um I, I mean that does make sense to some extent because see we we don't we don't look at music uh in in a way that oh we're not judging it like oh is this gonna be famous sure uh, it's it's more from the consumer point of view. It's like okay. putting yourself in the shoes of the listener of, let's say, a particular playlist. Mm. So for, for Pakistani rock, your audience is going to be completely different. Pakistani indie is going to be completely different. For Let's say for a mood, um, our mood and moments playlist, like there's a 
if there's like a, a down tempo cruising playlist for just like a long drive it's going to yeah. be for an audience right so for every see i think every song has a place somewhere um and it's just a matter of of creating that space mm. on, on platform so um of course like unless it's like a voice note right <laughs> <laughs> and um like uh, there are certain um qualitative standards that you know a song has to uphold to of like, course of uh, course uh, you know it just can't be um like a you know like, like a like a rough mix voice, or something like it needs to be like a proper track yeah so it needs to be like a proper produced track but other than that like in terms of genre and sound and instrumentation and the feel and vibe and everything else that's like very um i would say not like very not very tangible things to kind of measure um i think every song has a space and we try to create that space based on um what the what the consumer wants to listen to so for example if i am talking about the that playlist down tempo cruising it's the it's a playlist for you to listen to when you're on a drive and it's just like very moody kind of playlist um yeah, yeah. Tempo, low bpm tracks um specifically for nighttime right so that is a that that's very specific yeah so yeah super niche when we 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 think of about these moments uh, and we put them we put ourselves in the shoes of a listener who is listening to the playlist and we just that's what we look at when we're putting tracks in there okay is this something if if that this particular track for example was in the playlist as a listener would i listen to it or would i just like skip it and be like what is this it doesn't belong here yeah so that's that's sort of the criteria because at the end of the day we also try to create experiences for the audiences right and, and if that experience is good that is also good for the artist because he's going to be heard and he's going to be heard in the right places right if we play everyone everywhere it's not going to work it's just going to be noise yeah right exactly yeah. one of the the most consumed genres in pakistan right now are like desi pop right like when you say desi pop of course that means like indian content and pakistani pop content and all of that um but i think that's very largely attributed to um uh, the punjabi content that uh, pakistanis are consuming a lot like ap hidden is so big show right. like king these artists that like are so big in uh, in pakistan right now and um and i think that's a very nice kind of uh, kind of intersection <laughs> between the the pakistani and indian um content and how like you know you we usually see that you know bollywood is so big generally yeah, in pakistan yeah. as well and in south asia overall as well but like when you think about desi pop it's not that, it, that doesn't really include bollywood mm, mm. that's like non bollywood music so non bollywood music is sort of like their indie um so yeah, it yeah. could be um it could be when chai met toast kind of indie band doing like uh, music in hindi or yeah. it could be on uh, some like abd ab dhilana show who are doing like punjabi music so um i think that's very interesting because um we w- when we talk about south asian diaspora they really don't care what they're listening to whether it's it's like um it's hindi urdu punjabi indian pakistani bangladeshi as long as south asian they dig it yeah because of course they, they want they it's also their way of connecting to the culture yeah. back home music yeah. back home and everything right um so so we we for example like i told you desi hits is one of our uh, playlists that is super big in pakistan and the reason why is that because it's a combination of all desi hit track uh, hit tracks right now it was actually meant to be just for the diaspora but it's also super big in pakistan and like in south sure. asia in general um but uh, that, that's very interesting because you know uh, there we we have like not a lot of spaces where it's like the the music from both countries shows up together yeah um and then we see that you know people actually do really like at least on platform they really like seeing uh, listening to that music together yeah. and they don't really care about you know where it's from and all of that so so it's just like completely sonic yeah um and and um, uh, among some other genres like desi hip hop is also super big like sidhu musewala has been yeah. so 
Yeah. Um, and then Young Stunners. So like it's a combination of all these artists. Um, and then you put them together. We have a playlist called Desi Hip Hop. Um, the keywords them together, which is also like super popular. Um, so so yeah, like it's it's like when you when you see these trends on platform, you see that so many of like the Pakistani artists are being streamed in India, and then so much of Indian art is being streamed in Pakistan and vice versa. And then right. And then also there's so much spill spillover from Bangladesh and, and Sri Lanka into, into Pakistan and India as well. So it's really like, you know, there's just like, it's such a cliche to say, like, but there's literally no boundaries. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's, because it's like a global uh, platform. Um, you People just come across everything and they listen to everything and then literally nobody cares. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think it's it's really interesting because like you said, you know, South Asia could have like five or six countries within it. But like you mentioned at the start where people have common in the music, there's common themes, metaphors, and then obviously there's, you know, language connections and cultural connections across the border. It it makes so much sense that now that all the music, the sort of key cultural output is in one place, which is Spotify, um, mm-hmm. it, it makes perfect sense. And uh <laughs> Has your, because you also don't live in Pakistan uh, anymore, and you interact perhaps with people, more South Asian people outside of Pakistan uh, than you did when you were there. So you probably see this in person, like this interest in Pakistani music from non-Pakistanis, you know, like I see, because I also don't live in Pakistan, but there is, it's huge. And it's, it's always been there. I remember back in the day, you know, from like when Jal and Strings and, Rosen and all these people who were popular, they did massive gigs in India. So sure, there was an interest, uh, clear interest over there. But then, you know, things got, you know, relationships go up and down with, with the countries there. At that time, there was no Spotify, I think anywhere, uh, not even just in the region. But now that Spotify is there, there's like this platform that people can easily access and get that cultural connection that they're looking for. Yeah, I think uh, you mentioned the Musiwala Young Stunners. Uh, one of the things, uh, one of the songs, Ali Marquez, Cold Hours, we've talked about him before, uh, just exploded uh, primarily, I think, with the, because of huge interest in India. Um, and even in the people I know, the uh, hip hop uh, has this weird, this like a Karachi and Mumbai relationship that I'm finding <laughs> more and more because of perhaps movies like Gully Boy being very popular in Karachi and, you know, Karachi people speak sort of the same way that people in Mumbai do, even though Hindi and Urdu are not exactly the same. So I think that relationship probably shows up on Spotify as well, where, you know, people from India are listening to Pakistani hip hop and people from Pakistan are listening to Indian hip hop. And also there's collabs, right? Didn't Young Stunners collaborate with like, uh, I don't know if Krishna is Indian. He might be Indian. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I think there's, that sort of stuff is also happening. No, definitely. I think, um, and I, I feel like um, it's happening a lot. It's not happening maybe too much in the mainstream. Sure. But it's still happening with like, yeah, Hassan Rahim um, collab uh, with, I think, uh, what was the name of that artist? His um, his track was called Dhundla. Um, I think it was either Tamander or Yashraj. Okay. But um but that was a great track. And then um, I think there are a lot of other artists that are working with Indian artists right now um, that I've just like heard about. Um, I had a track with uh, um, this our Indian artist, Abhilasha Sinha, uh, I think a few months ago. So I think on some level, like, yeah, um, we are very receptive to it. And the audiences also like really love when that happens um and on from from a listener's perspective um on spotify this is just like this is super normal yeah yeah nobody really thinks about what they're listening to even if it's not like indian pakistan thing it's just like now like k-pop is so big (laughs) yeah 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 Yeah. (laughs) i saw on your Uh, recently when you i think you released your was it the one year stats or two year stats uh mm -hmm. every city has bts Every city in Pakistan has BTS in the top five, I think. Yeah. Um, so that's, I mean, that makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah. So it's it's really that. Yeah. Yeah. At this point, it's just really not. 
a market country region thing it's just like everyone's listening to everything as as long as it's just like sonically sounds good yeah yeah don't understand the lyrics don't understand the language if like i think i think the reason why pasuri made it to tokyo <laughs> yeah and coachella is that is is that uh it's simply that sonically is just resonated like musically it's resonated with people and even if you don't understand what the lyrics are saying you just connect with the music because it's like harmonically it's just it, it's like it's, it has a connection with your head mm. um so i think and, and of course that's one of the reasons with kpop as well even though now, now there's like you know bts army that kind of really pushes kpop and all of that but other than that the re, the, the way it started was that it it all had some sort of um uh, connection to the uh, the people in terms of i think i think with kpop is always also a lot of the visual angle and sure. how yeah, yeah, yeah. charismatic these artists are it's a yeah. group and yeah. uh, they're main choreographers and they're uh, they have this like the it factor about them and then you know you combine music with it and um so i think it, it was also about you know the culture is very appealing and all of that um but yeah but i think if for ali marke as well um it did really well well in i think yeah, it did really well in india as well um but i do think that for example aruj's music mm. um is also something that even if you don't understand it just resonates with you in terms of like it's it's just very calming um you know so as long as you get that intended feeling from a song that's all it needs to like resonate with people and then just go big um i don't and, mean to and, put... and the chances of that happening on on spotify are massive because of course. you know it's a global audience there you know people from yeah. all the world on that platform yeah not to not to sort of suggest ideas but you know if you guys are doing live experiences and indian people like pakistani music and pakistani people like indian music I don't know, man. Aage ja ke maybe in Dubai you do something live where you get artists from both places, and you know audiences have their minds yeah, explode. Yeah, um, yeah. The one thing I think we're almost at time, but the one thing uh, that I was wondering uh, that I should talk to you about, there was I think maybe it was on the two year anniversary. There was a live, there was an in person event in Pakistan. I think perhaps in Lahore that you were in Pakistan for as well with artists and such. Oh, in ago. Karachi, was in Karachi, maybe, maybe I don't know. Um, I mean, we had a we had a masterclass in Lahore in March, and also the Paka Hit Hai live event in March. Paka Hit Hai is one of our flagship hits brands, so it's like curating all the local hits, and it's like a very Pakistani playlist. So, yeah. so we don't use any other uh, hit tracks, whether they're international or whatever. Right. Um. So. um we it's been like about i think 9 to 10 months uh since it, it's been launched and it's one of our most popular like hits hits playlist on on the platform so we want to make sure that we kind of bring it on ground and interact with fans and also like the artists from those playlists are performing live and kind of giving them um giving um the, the fans of the playlist or the fans of the artists a little bit more intimate kind of uh, experience um and it's something that we're going to try and do quarterly um okay. also it's like um, um an effort to try and do more gigs in pakistan um, right right create that like, also kind of that ecosystem that you know the gigs are regularly happening in pakistan uh-huh. um so it's it's kind of like a you 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 could say it's just like a start to that so um we 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 did it in collaboration with collabs it's like um it's like a co-working space in a community in in Lahore mm. uh, they have an amazing space and we did the first one there with Tahaji and Abdul Hanan um two of uh, you know the best performers uh, in terms of uh, music on, on the playlist itself um and yeah yeah that was um there was also like try to make sure that the artists on that playlist also are getting some um some extra push and extra promotion as well um yeah hopefully i think the next one's going to be very soon um in lahore the same menu as well so yeah very good i didn't realize that spotify is looking to regularly do in person events as well hopefully yeah yeah no we're definitely we're going to be on ground much more i think since 
since like after covid since last year i think end of last year we've been on ground quite a bit so and it's going to be the case in the future as well in the future as well oh that's very cool that's very cool all right well thank you very much rudava for joining uh this has been great i think hopefully we'll have some more co- conversations because i'm very interested this channel is very interested Absolutely. in the music and i think you're a great source of information from the big uh platform that we all look forward to um anything you want to say before we wrap any closing message no, for the super. youth um thank you so much for for having me it was yeah it was a very interesting chat with you and um yeah um i mean there's there's a lot of local music that we've programmed and curated for the audiences so yeah if it's in general like to your audiences as well like if they want to check out some new discoveries they've never heard of please check out fresh finds you know if you want to amplify and help some um some female women musicians um uh, check out equal yeah um check out for all our emerging artists um and yeah if you're just like in a mood to chill check out daisy lofi there's literally everything something for everyone um on the platform and it's for free love it love it um what you should do is send me uh we'll connect over these playlists and i'll put them in the description so that you the listener or viewer can just scroll down and you'll find all of them there how's that sound yeah perfect okay all right thank you everyone for listening watching rudaba for coming and uh yeah we'll, we'll see you when we see you next bye